Hello, good afternoon Asia and good morning Europe. A very warm welcome to the ABB Robotics Auto Tier 1 webinar about joining technologies for the automotive supply chain. My name is Andreas Arnold. I will be your host and moderator today. And up front, I do have some information for you. Um, to ensure the quality of the call, I will mute the whole audience. We will have a Q&A uh, session after the presentation where I will try to unmute everyone to enable you to speak up and ask questions. Further, I want to make you aware that we are recording the session and we will, of course, make the recording available for you on our ABB channels afterwards. With that, I would like uh, to start and to hand over to our two interesting uh, speakers today who will let you know what ABB is offering is and what we can offer for you and you for your production. With that, over to you. Shiri, I guess you will introduce yourself. <laughs> yes, I will do. Thanks for the work. Uh, good morning from sunny Prague. I hope you have a nice weather as well in your destination. My name is Jiri Hartmann. I'm working for the Global Solution Center, uh, ABB, here in Czech Republic, and we are dedicated uh, to aluminium and metal processing, particularly uh, thermal processing, so welding and cutting. So, with that, I would like to tell you that ABB is involved uh, when it comes to metal and aluminium processing in many processes which can be robotized. It can be foundry, it can be machine tending, it can be material handling, dispensing, assembly, quality inspection, surface treatment. It's appearing more and more uh, often nowadays also in our desired applications, for instance, uh, laser cleaning applications. And today we will be mostly talking about welding and cutting. When I'm talking about welding, I mean in particular arc welding, laser welding, spot welding, but it could be also friction stir welding when it comes to aluminum processing and other types of welding. Uh, then we have cutting, and in our world, uh, this is mainly connected to uh, laser cutting applications. We are driven by uh, automotive, mostly. So we are taking care of various uh, car standard parts, and we are mainly talking about uh, various body parts, uh, which could be made from different types of steel or aluminum. So in our standard world, we are very often in contact with uh, inquiries coming uh, from the world of cross carbine uh, made of steel and aluminum, uh, bumpers, <coughs> subframes, doors, different kinds of beams, so A pillar, B pillar, it could be door reinforcements and so it could be various types of uh, floor and roof parts and side members. But of course, we are not only talking about body parts, but we are also involved in chassis parts. Uh, nowadays, most requests are coming uh, uh, for batteries because they are connected with electromobility, uh, axles, frames, exhaust systems, fuel systems, suspension systems, but also seat frames. Here a question mark uh, if we should account uh, seat frame to chassis part, normally no, but especially connected to electromobility, especially driver's seat is uh, sometimes accounted to a rolling chassis, so I put this part here. And last but not least, uh, uh, the part which is often made of aluminium, it's the heat exchanger, so radiator. This is very often robotized as well. So our offering for, for arc welding. We are on uh, the market of arc welding since ages already, and we have developed uh, standard products which we are offering, and we are selling that as a standard product, and also we make complete production lines 
which are built based of these uh, cells. So we call it FlexArc. It's a product which is available worldwide and it has been developed uh, since 20 years already. It's coming originally from US, but it was imported to Europe somewhere in uh, early 2000. And uh, since 2006, we are producing this, uh, this cell or these cells uh, also in Czech Republic. So we have already wide portfolio of standard cells which are tailored uh, for automotive industry. We always keep an eye on safety, so all the standards are always updated according to latest uh, directives wherever we are delivering uh, the cell. Uh, it's a standard, so it's pre-engineered, but we are also able to do the further modi modification or customization according to the customer needs, and we often do that uh, when the cell is connected to the uh, to the complete project. Uh, as you can see on the picture, the, the concept of the cell is always the same. Uh, we put the complete equipment on the common steel platform and we do the complete pre-installation in our facilities in ABB. After the pre-acceptance test, the customer can witness that uh, the cell is according to the customer wishes. And after we have the confirmation that this is really what the customer wanted, we dismantle the cell to uh, functional pieces and we usually ship one cell on one track to the final uh, destination. And then it's a, it's a plug and play solution because we can reinstall at the customer side the complete cell in one shift, usually. So in standard, you have on a steel platform one, two, or three robots. You have various positioners depending on the need uh, according to the part, number of uh, axis of rotation. Then we put the fencing around. So this is the safety equipment actually. Safety equipment in the loading area can change or can vary as well. In this particular case, you can see the light curtains, but uh, the operator can be protected also by rolling doors, which is often the case by the automotive industry. Then we put uh, a controlling uh, equipment. So uh, automotive cells, they are very often controlled by the PLC uh, or by the robot controller itself. And then we add the roof, uh, which, is, uh, which has basically two functions. First, uh, it avoids uh, that you have the, the fumes coming out of the cell. And the second purpose is uh, uh, the safety function as well. So uh, if we want to be successful on the field of uh, applications, uh, we definitely need to have well-equipped uh, laboratories. We are doing uh, tests, arc welding tests in our facilities for our own purposes so that we know that what we are offering, we are also able to deliver in requested quality, but we are also offering uh, arc welding tests to our customers stand alone. For that, we have in our facilities fully equipped laboratories, which allows us to uh, perform tests on steel and also aluminum parts. We can test some simple parts, but also uh, complex parts, uh, thanks to positioners, uh, single and dual axis positioners, which we have in our laboratory as well. And if we need more robots, we can make tests uh, with, uh, for instance, two robots in master-slave configuration as well. If we need, uh, we can also add some tracking systems such as ABB Weld Guide is, or if the customer requests some third-party system, we can integrate it in the test as well. On the screen, uh, you can see on the picture on the right, uh, two recent parts which we were testing or we are testing actually at the moment. Uh, the upper one, it's a battery tray made of aluminium and the bottom one also aluminium part and this is, the, this is the radiator. I can see in the chat section that uh, there is the sound missing to some people. Is everyone listening to me or uh, do I have an issue? 
we we do not have a general issue, so sound is uh, sound works fine now. Thank Perfect. you, Jerry, for taking care. Thanks, Andy. So with that, I would like to move on to some uh, projects uh, which are based on these cells and which were realized by us, by ABB. And uh, with the first case, I would like to demonstrate the scalability. The, the advantage of cell-based concept is that uh, you as a customer, you don't have to invest all the capex at once at the beginning of the project. For instance, here, uh, we delivered in total two uh, flex arc cells for production of doors frame. The production is running in Czech Republic at the moment. We delivered complete, uh, complete system, inclu inclusive fixtures, inclusive programming of trajectories, tuning of the welding process, cycle time responsibility, and so on. The part was made of steel. And we delivered at the beginning only one cell, which was capable to produce complete parts. And then with the production ramp up, we delivered the second cell later on. Here the project which is uh, running in Germany at the moment, uh, it is already producing. Uh, it's uh, for German car manufacturer of fancy, uh, fancy sports cars. And uh, uh, the, the, the part is quite complex. It's a cross carbine uh, made of aluminium. Also uh, two cells installed in the line. They are operated uh, manually by operators. Uh, to make it a little bit more easier, uh, we added some, uh, some buffers and some storages in the loading area of the cell. So behind the, uh, the roll doors, there are uh, places to store the input parts. Uh, and here I would like to demonstrate mainly, uh, let's say, the challenge which we are having whenever uh, aluminium parts uh, is the topic, because aluminium and not only uh, parts like that, but uh, any kind of aluminium parts, they are very sensitive on input quality and stability of input parts, because uh, aluminium is quite difficult to weld. A similar part, also cross car beam, um, uh, but in this case it is made of steel for German car manufacture, and uh, this, this, with this I would like to demonstrate um, the availability of the product. At the beginning I mentioned that uh, Flex Arc Cell is globally available. You can get it really everywhere, no matter if you are in Asia, if you are in Europe, or if you are in uh, US or uh, even in Africa. And this particular project uh, was actually for a German customer uh, which wanted to have identical production line or small line uh, on three continents. In this particular case, it was US, it was China, and it was South Africa. So uh, ABB approach was that uh, we did the common design uh, together with the customer in Germany, and we shared the design around, around the world, and we deployed uh, production line first in US, then in China, and then we did the local manufacturing in Czech Republic for South Africa. So from Czech Republic, we delivered the complete line to South Africa. So in total, we are talking about 12 cells with welding fixtures with the complete responsibility on ABB side. Another cell-based project. Uh, here we got a new customer in Poland. Uh, he was never working with us before. And uh, basically, I would like to demonstrate one advantage of such concept uh, for customers who are keeping standards. Um, in this case, the customer basically used ABB standard cell with no modifications. There were no specific customer standards at all. And uh, this was a first project which we delivered. Uh, it consisted six cells, but in two phases. In first phase, it was six cells. And in the second phase, uh, it was originally four cells to be accounted for the project uh, uh, production of catalytic converter. In the meantime, customer ordered a second project for another customer, but the customer, the OEM, was uh, in the meantime acquired by 
another OEM and the project was completely cancelled. Unfortunately, cells were already pre-installed and uh, there were basically two options to either cancel the, the complete project or we could reuse these cells for a second phase of the first project. So basically at the end of the day, uh, our customer did not have to cancel anything. We just used uh, standard cells uh, which were ordered for another project and we finished or completed this first project using these cells. The only minor changes was, uh, were done to the uh, processing equipment, but that's it. Uh, today, we are having uh, in Poland at this particular customer over 20 cells, and it's a very nice location, I have to say. I also mentioned at the beginning that uh, our cells are pre-engineered, so there is no engineering required in most of the cases, but in some cases, our customers are asking for specific standards and specific solutions. So we are also open to modify it, and this is a real example of that. So uh, these cells, there are 13 cells in total for production of seed frames located in Czech Republic, and they are uh, completely made according to the customer standard. With that, I would like to move on to uh, our offering uh, regarding the laser application, so laser welding and laser cutting. Uh, you can see one cell on the picture, and uh, basically the concept is the same. Uh, we are having arc welding cells, we are having laser welding and laser cutting cells, and uh, the concept is similar. However, there are significant differences, uh, especially in fencing because uh, when it comes to arc welding, uh, uh, in arc welding fencing uh, performs as a mechanical barrier between the operator and, uh, and the robot. But here we also need to take care about the laser safety. So uh, laser cells are made of sandwich panels, which are laser proof and certified. Also positioners, our standard positioners are customized because the the screen which divides the loading and welding area, uh, it's changed to a laser proof. And we also need to include some flap system to make the cell completely laser proof. Because there is, uh, it should not be possible for a laser beam to escape from the cell anyhow. Because not only the direct beam, but also reflections when we are playing with 6 kilowatt laser are dangerous for the human eye. Again, uh, we are active not only in products, we are delivering uh, solutions and complete lines. And to be successful, we need to have laboratories. So in our facility, we have fully equipped laboratories, uh, which uh, enable us to, uh, to perform tests with laser welding with fixed optics, laser welding with the scanning heads, laser cutting. And at the moment, we are uh, on our own uh, building uh, laser hybrid head, which uh, uh, gives us the possibility to have a mixture of, uh, of uh, arc welding and laser welding, and also head which is able to carry uh, feeder for a cold wire uh, for aluminium welding. Coming to some first projects, uh, this is exactly the same concept as before. Uh, I already showed you door frames so these are also door frames uh, located in Czech Republic and uh, we managed to replicate identical project four times already so we have four identical cells which are producing different uh, variants of a uh, doors frame for different customers they are made of steel uh, here the issue is that uh, it's uh, as many of uh, other automotive parts uh, uh, these parts are zinc coated so we need to play in this case with the laser process and we used laser dimpling to get rid of the zinc layer uh, so that we can weld uh, properly. This is a very specific cell which was also replicated uh, three times already and uh, it should demonstrate the productivity of the laser. We have only one robot in the middle with one scanning head and uh, we have twin uh, positioner's cell 
operated by four operators. This is extremely useful when you have part like this, so also seat backrest, uh, when you have a lot of short seams. And I can tell you these four operators, they are having really hard time to feed parts in time to catch the cycle time because the robot is extremely productive here. This project uh, regards to bumper. Um, this is a project with a scanning head, laser scanning head as well. Uh, we added some optical tracking system because we had to aim on the edge of the bumper and the precision is here extremely vital. So we need to aim with uh, tens of millimeters. And uh, I want to demonstrate with this project some kind of transfer between the pure cell-based project, which is operated by operator. So the loading is done by the human being. And here you already see some uh, automation in the loading area. So there are uh, two robots in the loading area, one loading robot, which is taking input parts from, uh, from a docking station. And there is, a, there is an uh, unloading robot, which is taking finished part from the positioner and putting uh, the finished part on the on the conveyor, uh, output conveyor. So this is a kind of transfer between the cell-based projects to the real turnkey systems or projects which we are delivering as well. And this is uh, already a first example of that. This example is made of standard cells as well, but adding some manipulation robots in between, we are able to create a complete production line. So we have 10 Mac welding robots, it's a steel part, it's a front frame, and the production is running in Spain at the moment. And we are at the subframes. Uh, this is the second uh, example of the subframe uh, coming from China. Uh, our colleagues delivered uh, a complete line with uh, uh, X type positioner, which was replicated in the line six times. In between, we have one cell with laser cutting and putting everything together, adding some manipulation robots. We created a complete line for production of the subframe for the German manufacture of the car. One successful example uh, for uh, axles, truck axles in particular. Uh, this is a project which has a little bit of everything. Uh, basically, it's created of cells. Uh, these cells were customized. There is no twin station concept. We have no loading and welding area in this, uh, in this approach because these cells are loaded and unloaded by manipulation robots, which are mounted on tracks. So there is also an emergency backup concept. If one cell fails, for instance, you can still uh, continue production using another cells and so on. So basically, the, the line should never stop. Uh, ABB, in this case, was not the supplier of the CNC machines, but we were responsible for their integration. In total, we have three CNC machines in the, in the line, and uh, we are responsible for the complete axle, rear axle production. The uh, project is delivered in two phases. The first phase was already delivered. It's running in Belgium at the truck uh, manufacturer. And uh, the second phase is basically uh, in the half of uh, uh, installation. Right now, we are a little bit slowed down by the COVID situation, but uh, as soon as the situation allows that, we should finish the, the, the second half as well. I was also speaking about the complete chassis frame. So this is one example also from China. And this is a pure dedicated line, uh, which is already quite a, a big line, I would say, consisted of 32 Mach welding robots. And I want to say that uh, the line is uh, dedicated for the chassis frame, but it's robust enough to accommodate uh, in total nine different variants of the, of the frame. So you are able to produce uh, nine different, basically different uh, parts in the same line. And I would like to touch a bit also um, uh, spot welding. So this is a kind of combination of uh, pure body invite project 
and there is laser welding uh, delivered uh, uh, by ABB, complete project. And the project is right now in the execution phase and we are shortly before its handover in Spain at the, at the OEM supplier. And uh, uh, we are talking about the A-pillar. So the complete A-pillar is being produced by the line. There are in total nine handling robots, but please don't be mistaken. These handling robots, they are uh, having stationary guns around them. So you have gripper, you take the part, and uh, the spot welds are done by the stationary, uh, stationary guns. So uh, those are nine handling robots, but uh, I would uh, rather say those are spot welding robots. Uh, on the right side, you see there are uh, quite well visible uh, two laser welding cells, uh, which also do their job. And I would like to dedicate uh, just a couple of slides to battery trays, because battery tray, this is, uh, this is a part which is getting more and more uh, requested at the moment until the end of last year. We uh, saw a lot of requests which were very different. Very, very, there was a large variance in the, in the sizes, in the, in the materials, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the shapes of the, of the trays themselves. But nowadays, I would say it's uh, plus minus stable. So we can expect that the battery tray will be uh, covering the complete floor, like the one on the picture. It uh, will be mostly uh, made of aluminium uh, because the, uh, the request on the material is to have the high thermal conductivity to keep cells inside uh, in the same uh, temperatures. And uh, also, when it comes to the, uh, to the processes, it's getting more and more stable uh, we can see that uh, uh, the uh, typical battery tray is right now made of extruded profiles and the floor is made of stamped materials or, or some aluminum sheets. So here you can see some example of a real line with the process flow which describes what we are dealing with. Uh, it's a combination of multiple processes. Some of them were almost forgotten in automotive sector uh, because they were developed many, many years ago, and since then they were barely used, but they are getting more and more important nowadays. So you can see from the left to right, uh, here we are dealing with arc welding. When it comes to aluminium, some kind of push-pull, something like the CMT from Fronius is often, very often used. Then you can see friction steel welding. This is the example of a process made for aluminium, which was in automotive recently not very frequently used, but nowadays it's getting almost everywhere. Then you can see cleaning. This is a laser cleaning application, typically. Then dispensing, so gluing, sealing, laser welding, cooling, and CNC machining. These are typical processes when we are talking about the production of battery tray. And here you can see some real example, uh, also line delivered in China. Uh, aluminum battery tray and ABB uh, delivered the processes of arc welding, handling, uh, and uh, we had to integrate also friction steer welding and dispensing. And when I'm talking about uh, electromobility, um, of course, battery trays, so housings of batteries, it's not the core, it's not the only one, but batteries themselves are interesting. And I have to say that uh, we are also involved in production of batteries. Uh, this is a project uh, delivered to our own facility, so ABB factory in Switzerland, where we are producing traction batteries for trains and trams. And uh, uh, cooperation of uh, ABB Germany, ABB Switzerland, ABB Czech Republic was a result of, uh, of the complete production line for uh, for this kind of battery. So you have, a, you have one handling robot in line which is taking individual cells and uh, it's placing these cells in the battery box and then the complete battery box is transferred to laser welding cell where we are welding uh, the contacts, individual contacts of these cells 
then we put it out and we put it into the charging system, charge it, and the battery is produced. Here I have to say the biggest challenge was not the handling, it was not also the, uh, the welding process, but we had to investigate how to mitigate the uh, how to mitigate the possible fire because the fire extinguishion system is something very new and uh, uh, yeah once you set up this kind of battery in fire it's uh, it's very difficult almost impossible to extinguish it so uh, we are having right now a solution which is uh, which has its own ce so it's safe and it also contains the fire extinguish system. With that, I would like to hand over my word to Václav because he will uh, be shortly speaking about uh, digitalization, which is also very uh, attractive at the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shiri. Actually, very, very impressive what we can offer to our automotive supply chain uh, customers. Um, to the audience, uh, please save your questions for later or type them in to the Q&A section in the, in the window. Um, I will try to unmute you individually um, after Václav's presentation and then uh, hopefully we can answer all questions. But now we are very keen to hear about our digital solution for our arc welding center cells. Over to you, Václav. Thank you, Andy. And hello, everyone. Good morning and good afternoon from my side as well. My name is Václav Schwup. I was as a digital lead for business line automotive tier one. And I would like to present you in the next few minutes, you know, our digital solutions for welding cells. But first, uh, let me tell you something about uh, about our our strategy, you know, about our digital strategy. So the ABB robotics digital strategy consists of three layers. The first layer, intelligent connected equipment, is about all our devices which we sell to the market. So it's not only about connectivity and the data availability, but it's also about adding additional services like our connected services. Because with the connected services, we can connect seamlessly to any robot and provide also on top to our customers a set of applications for monitoring, maintenance, and the fleet management. On the, on the second layer, covering cells and lines, we are talking about uh, digital application-specific solutions. We are combining our expertise as a system integrator and solution provider with our new generation of digital software. And this is the layer actually where our digital flex arc fits. So we will dive into this layer in a minute. On the field layer, digital operations, we are combining all the different cells and lines together and we are providing the solutions for the factory level. Now let me explain briefly the proposed architecture of digital factory. It starts on the left side with the field devices that means any kind of device which is connected through the field layer into the IT world. On the field layer, this can be like PLC, ABB robot controller, can be actually any kind of OT controller running. And on the IT side, in the edge, we add set of applications for more intelligence, especially anything which requires a lot of data and should be controlled closely to the actual asset loop, like quality loops or productivity loops. We truly believe in open architecture here. So that's the reason why we connect everything through open standards and open APIs to the factory or to the cloud layer. And this is helping you know, the customers with the orchestration of different cells, lines, and devices. We also provide the set of collaboration tools for the stakeholders in the factory. But uh, what does it mean for our FlexArc cell, for digital FlexArc? or how we reflect basically this architecture in our welding cell. So as you hadn't seen before, the cell consists of uh, different uh, equipment like robot, PLC, welding source, uh, welding source, but also there could be some, some additional sensors. So we decided to add to the cell BNR edge controller to connect all the components of the cell 
and get the online data. The data are then utilized in the configurable value applications, which run also in the edge. As I mentioned before, we run the productivity apps and quality apps close to the assets. That means uh, you don't you don't have to you don't, you don't have any problem with the legacy uh, with the latency of the data, and uh, you can get always immediate insights about the process. And mainly, all your data are stored within your network. Of course, for the customers who would like to trans transfer the data to the factory system or to the cloud, we offer standard communication protocols as MQTT to build this link. Our focus is to provide really set of applications around the OEE, which means overall equipment efficiency. Therefore, we are focusing on three things, availability, performance, and quality. On availability side, we are developing a set of tools to be able to prevent unplanned stops. When the stop happens, we must react faster and decrease the recovery time. So we are designing these applications along the business process to involve all respective people by providing them the right level of information. In the performance, in the second part, we are talking about speed, which means the cycle time. Here we are developing a tool which breaks down the cycle time of whole process in the cell or line into the subsets, and then pairing that with the required cycle time and highlighting all the slippages. On the quality, on the last side, we have two main problems, reducing repairs and reducing scrap. In the first step, we are, we are introducing the set of applications just to report and trace the right quality. Because only if you report and trace, we can start to make improvements on the performance and availability without impacting the quality itself. So, how you are able to consume the data and information. We believe that uh, we have to offer the variable options for the access to the applications, but we have to keep the same user experience. It doesn't matter if you are a production manager and would like to check uh, some uh, OEE trend of your welding line using your office computer, or you are maintenance engineer using tablet on the shop floor, and would like to check the error details because you just received automatic notification that welding cell is in the error status. Or you are an operator of the cell who can review the actual status of the cell on the touch panel attached to the cell. But the user experience is always the same. So you can, of course, adjust based on your need and based, your, based on your user profile. If we zoom in into the, into the application, we see the main dashboard of the specific cell. In our pipeline, we have also the solution for complete lines where you would be able to see data aggregated for whole welding, welding line. Our aim is to bring all important data to the main dashboard. The user, of course, can adjust the dashboard, can adjust the screen, and configure the widgets which are visible. As I mentioned before, our focus is on overall equipment efficiency, which combine the main attributes, availability, performance, and quality. But also, you would be able to find easily documentation for specific parts of the cell, manual service guidelines, and so on. You can also, you know, of course, dive uh, deeper into the details and use, you know, data for your analysis and for your trends. So this is also possible, and you can, of course, adjust, you know, the screens. So how to, how to conclude, actually? We really strongly believe that digital layer should be essential part of our FlexArc cell portfolio, because digital can help customers to monitor and improve the welding process by providing online insights into that process. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Václav. Actually, very, very impressive how we move forward on, on the digital side. Um, then we do have uh, plenty of time for questions. And I saw in the, in the chat section that Paolo Conca do has a, a question. I will unmute you. Paolo, can, are you with us? Yes, I am. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Loud and clear. <laughs> uh, 
we were able to sorry now now we can hear you very good okay okay uh, my question was regarding steer welding i saw you had experience with steer welding i wonder if uh, how did you do that uh, was the robot tending a dedicated machine or a couple of dedicated machine like i i saw in the layout or do you also have experience of the robot uh, uh, handling the the tool the welding tool i guess that's a question for shiri shiri can you answer that yeah, yeah, that's right. That's uh, definitely uh, directed to me. Hello, Paolo. So uh, <laughs> basically, both approaches uh, are uh, are uh, in place. Uh, uh, depends definitely on the project. Depends on the depends on the part. Uh, in the case you have seen, uh, there was used a dedicated machine. Sometimes you need really, really high forces which you are not able to achieve by robot. But in some particular cases, you can use the robot to carry the head. Uh, ABB does not have the friction steer welding, friction steer welding head uh, as a product, so we cooperate uh, with suppliers. So in particular case, uh, we are often in contact with ESAP, uh, and we are, we are delivering solutions with ESAP head being carried by, by our robots. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Very good. And then we do have an additional question from Hector Mendes. Um, Hector, I unmuted you. You, you should be able to speak. Uh, good morning from Spain, guys. Thank you very much. Good morning, Hector. <laughs> uh, it was a nice presentation, first of all. I really enjoyed it. And my question is about uh, how do you foresee the next years, the in 2020 and 2021, in terms of new projects due to this crisis we are facing right now, and due to the current, let's say, automotive industry crisis. I don't know uh, how do you see uh, you of that. Hmm. So I guess that's also on me. Uh, thanks for the question, Hector. Um, yeah. Well, uh, of course, we see a slowdown caused by the COVID situation. Uh, we, well, it's uh, basically the market is frozen at the moment, as, uh, as, as most of our customers are on home office or even closed down. Uh, we also saw some decrease even before the COVID came that was more or less connected to electromobility and uh, let's say the finalization of uh, electro platforms, which are a bit delayed than the original timing was done. But uh, with that, I, I believe that there is some optimistic future ahead of us because these platforms are being really finalized now. And we are working on several uh, large uh, projects to be, to be deployed in the next months for the electro platforms mainly. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Good. Very good. And I can see there are more questions coming in, which is very good. Um, we do have a question from uh, from Hasmut Chosh. So let's check if I can unmute you. Are you with us, Hasmut? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, uh, we, I'm from India in Gujarat, Ahmedabad. Uh, can we have a complete solution for robotics uh, like uh, cells? Okay. Yes, uh, yes uh, definitely. As, as mentioned, FlexArc is available globally. So just be skilled to need to conduct your local ABP. We are quite well connected. And solution based on our our solution are in India. And uh, second part of your question I uh, second part of your question. Uh, you ask if it can be the independent cell or make it cell. Of course, uh, make it cell as a product as well. No problem. Cell as a product as well. No problem. 
So very good. Um, I, I see we do have a little bit of, of uh, interfering sound, but that's not an issue. Um, we have additional question um, from Shupam. Shupam, let's check if I can un unmute you. Shupam, are you with us? Unfortunately not, but may, maybe we can we can answer your question. I, I think I can take it, Andy. Yes. So the question is if the OEE is also uh, available, not only for the Flexar, but also for maybe other cells and so on. Yes, the, the functionality or the digital solution, digital layer, it's uh, available also for other, you know, kind of cells. Uh, of course, you know, we had to start somewhere, so we decided to start with the FlexArc because this is our standard, you know, cell. So uh, the initial development has been performed for the FlexArc, but, you know, it is not really connected to the FlexArc and you can use it also, also for different kind of cells. Very good. Um, then we do have a question uh, from from uh, Gopal. Um, Gopal, please go ahead. You are unmuted. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't work as well. Then we take that uh, this way as well. Go. Um, now I lost the question. Um, what additional hardware is required uh, in the robot for that? You already have the follow-up question to the previous yeah. one. Basically, no, in the robot, no hardware is really needed, like additional hardware, because we are able just to connect to the robot controller and get the data which we need for these applications. So uh, we have to, of course, you know, add the additional hardware to the cell. And as I mentioned, we decided to use the BNR edge controller. BNR is part of the ABB. Uh, they have a great, you know, solution for the connectivity. So uh, this is the, let's say, the bare minimum to include the edge controller because uh, through the edge controller, we are able to get the data via different protocols from basically all accessories which are installed in the cell. And then, of course, it's optional if you would like to have a touch screen, you know, also from the BNR on the cell and so on. Yeah, very good. Thank you. And there we then we go with the question from Gopal. How can uh, we monitor quality in the digital FlexArc cell? The quality, it depends. We have, you know, different solutions. Of course, you know, the one concept is to put a small touch screen in front of the cell and to ask the operator just to report, you know, and trace the quality based on the visual inspection. But then, of course, we have also also more advanced solutions. I mean, the, on the top, we have our 3D vision and meteorology colleagues, you know, which are delivering really precise scanning solution for the for the quality inspection. So there are different options how to control quality from, let's say, the manual one for the mainly traceability reasons to the really high-tech solutions. Very good. Then we do have a question from Ying Xun. So I'll, I'll give it another try with unmuting. Ying Xun, uh, are you with us? Uh, hi, guys. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Hi, thank you. Very, very nice presentation. I'm Ying Xun Chen from uh, Dura Automotive. I just uh, got a quick question for Jerry. You mentioned uh, during laser welding uh, for battery cell, there is a chance to have a fire. It's quite dangerous. So is this because the battery is not stable or because the laser penetrated the, 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 the battery cell? What is mm -hmm. the solution to avoid it? Yeah, uh, 
good question thanks for that uh, that was a challenge that was really a challenge uh, during this uh, during this project um it's not that the battery would not be stable it's uh, basically if you misfire and you do not hit exactly the point you you want to hit because you you really you are welding very small contacts yeah and if you if you really aim wrongly then you uh, you go to the cell and uh, you set it in fire which uh, which is quite uh, uh, a big hazard because once you set up the battery in fire, it's almost impossible to extinguish it. Uh, yeah, the, sure. process, the process starts, and basically, if you uh, if you remove the access of the air, it creates its own atmosphere, so it starts to burn. Uh, to, to it starts to be in fire again after certain period of time. So basically, the only chance you have is that you can suppress uh, the process for a certain period of time. And uh, we cooperated uh, with one German supplier of the, uh, of the system, which we integrated into our cell. It's uh, basically an aerosol which floods the complete space of the uh, welding area of the cell. And you basically prevent the fire uh, to, I would say, something around 40 minutes. And you have these 40 minutes to safely uh, close the battery in some dedicated storage and remove it from the production space, and then you basically need to uh, need to uh, let's say finish the process uh, somewhere outside uh, because the the fire can uh, then uh, be like uh, in two days uh, or something like that. So that's the only way how you can uh, avoid it. But uh, the the solution at the moment is. Uh, is safe, is uh, is certified, so uh, that is a solution for that. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Another quick, uh, yeah, another quick one is uh, about the digital uh, factory concept. Do you guys do you guys have a, a case study to share after this meeting? Sorry, can you repeat the question uh, about the uh, digital factory concept? You know, yeah. the, the the last presentation yeah. from yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, do you guys have a case study? To share after this meeting with all this audience. Uh, yes, we will. We will share um, the the recording of the presentation afterwards uh, via our our AVB channel. So you will be able to download to download it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. And then we have another question from Tilan Marusic. Tilan, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Very good. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you how many um, FlexArc cells can you connect to this uh, digital factory or to this dig uh, ABB ability, and if you can connect also different cells. Yeah, basically, these are two things. Yeah, to connect digital cell into the ability, you can do this via connected services. That means, you know, to connect your robots to the cloud and to use these, you know, applications uh, uh, within the connected services. What we just, you know, present to you, uh, there, is, there is no mandatory connection to the cloud. Yeah? We are trying to really keep all data and applications running in the edge. Of course, if you would like to then move the data outside of the edge, we are quite open and there is a there is a solution you know uh, to utilize the mqtt protocol so you can just configure the data link to your factory system or to your own cloud or even to the ability but the applications are running and the data stored mainly at the edge so it's not really necessary to connect yourself to the ability and from that point of view, you can connect as many cells as you like. Even you can even utilize, you know, one uh, BNR edge controller for more cells. So you don't need to install into the, every single cell the BNR edge controller. But of course, mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this has to be analyzed and also, you know, somehow somehow proposed. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for the answer. You're very welcome. We do have uh, even more question coming in, which is uh, which is very good. I like that. Uh, we do have a question from Christian Tudor. Christian, can you hear me? Are you with us? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Yes, loud okay. and clear. Uh, regarding uh, steel spot welding, 
Uh, I'm wondering if you have the possibility to check the conformity of the spot welding directly in the welding robots. What I mean in this moment, we, we are checking the conformity of the spot welding with the ultrasonic device out of the line or by destructive test. Do you have any system that can check the conformity of the spot welding directly in the welding cell? In the spot welding, in the spot welding, we do have. Uh, typically, we use a Bosch uh, uh, Bosch timer, Bosch controlling system, and uh, this system can have uh, this kind of possibility to check uh, the quality as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Very good. Then let's go to the next question. Uh, Rachashmian Ragavan does have one. You're unmuted. Please go ahead. No, now you. Hello. You hear us? Looks like it doesn't work. Then we take it this way. So his question was How do you help the customer during the COVID condition? Are you developing any online solution by integrating any Asia devices? I guess, Václav, you can take this, and we already have a broad portfolio, isn't it? That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, we announced that during the, during the COVID crisis, we will offer to our customers certain digital solutions for free, like our robot studio, like our you know, trainings, uh, and also the, the connected services. So you can check our website or the channels and uh, you can find more about that there. Yeah. So there is already announcement made, you know, about this. But of course, you know, we have uh, a lot of digital solutions and we are trying to really extend that, you know, offering. Very good. Then we go on with the, ke uh, with the question of, of Sandeep. Sandeep, are you there? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I'm here only. Very good. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah. This uh, question is uh, especially for J.D. Hartman. The uh, presentation is, was very, very, very good. They understand each and everything. Only one thing is related to that uh, traction batteries. That some incident ago, uh, regarding some safety issues. That can you enlighten that again? Because mm -hmm. we can understand so. Yeah, Please thank enlighten you. Again. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the greetings, first of all. Uh, I think uh, these uh, safety issues were already mentioned uh, because the question mm. already popped up. They were related to the uh, to the possibility to set the battery in fire. That was the only yeah, yeah. Uh, safety concern we had. But it was, it, it was quite serious because until mm. this moment, the production of batteries, uh, it's not a very common application and there are not so many suppliers of the uh, fire extinguishing systems uh, available on the market. So basically, we had to uh, develop uh, some solution together with the supplier of this system and certify it for our purpose. So we use the system based on the aerosol, which suppress the fire, and then it is connected to some fire prescriptions. If you set the battery in fire, how to uh, how to suppress the issue. You have you have given the, all the details regarding this. In case of some fire happened, then yes. what do you suppose to do? What we supposed to do? It is it is also okay. related to the fire prescriptions and fire norms in the facility. So there is ah. a fire brigade which has a directions mm. how to proceed, and uh, mm. basically we just uh, guarantee that uh, the, the the battery which is already affected, it will not start burning again in the next 40 minutes. Okay. Actually, I am from, uh, actually, I am from India, uh, Pune, but data green battery, mm -hmm. same we are producing the battery, manufacturing. that's why I asked this question. Okay. It's a separate little issue. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we are already um, overrun by one minute. I would say we allow one more question, and this question is uh, from Vala Murujan. Um, Vala, um, please go ahead and ask your question. Mm, sir, this is me, Vala Murujan from India. 
Hello. Uh, my question is, uh, during the during the production, if there is a less supply of air or gas, it will be there will be any notification or there will be a stoppage of robot. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can take that question. Of course, we are aware that this is quite you know critical for the production, and it could cost it could cost you know quite uh, extra let's say effort and money in case there is some uh, air leakage and so on. So uh, this is in our pipeline, and uh, within the next phase you know of the development, we are planning to really build an application for controlling of the leakages and you know consumption of the gas or of the air and so on within the cells. Very good. Thank you for that. So with with that, I would really like to thank you everyone for joining in and, and for listening. Uh, one more time, if you would like to um, re-listen to that webinar, we will make it uh, available for download on abb.com slash robotics. And with that, thank you very much. That was it. Hope to uh, talk and to uh, um, present to you soon in another webinar from ABB. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.